Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing cellular damage. Now, if you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because your support really means a lot to us and it really helps us out. We like to post brand new content for your education, for your medical education, especially in med school. And this content hopefully will be beneficial for your tests that will be coming up. So with that being said, let's talk about cellular damage by first discussing a brief overview of cellular injury. Now, keep in mind, our cells are able to handle a lot of stress and they have actually developed coping mechanisms for the stress that they're placed uh, under. And eventually, however, if too much stress is being put on a cell, our cells will get damaged. So when does that happen? Essentially, when uh, you have cellular injury, you're going to see that the amount of stress put upon a cell exceeds our cell's ability to adapt. Essentially, there's just too much stress. And the damage that can happen is going to be very wide ranging. Essentially, you have many different ranges of injury that our cells are going to be put, uh, that our cells are going to Going to go through based off of several factors. So the extent of the injury is actually going to depend on the type of cell, the type of stress being placed upon them, whether it's chemical, whether it's physical, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and most importantly, the severity of the cell. Okay, I'm sorry, the severity of the stress being placed on the cell. Now, going back to the type of cell, you have to remember that the type of cell actually matters when it comes to cellular injury. Why is that the case? Well, there are certain cells in our bodies, like our neurons, which are very susceptible, very susceptible to stress, like hypoxia. And there are other cells in our body, like our muscle cells, that are more resilient. Okay, so you need to think back to just basic uh, knowledge that you have. A stroke is very deadly to our brain because you're cutting off the blood supply and the oxygen supply in our brain for our neurons. And that leads to a very rapid decline and can cause a lot of deficits for people very quickly. Whereas a claudication in the leg lets our body kind of get adapted. Obviously, it's put under a lot of stress, but those muscle cells are able to handle that stress. And if you do a bypass in your leg in order to get more blood to that part, you can actually reverse a lot of the damage or improve a lot of the damage and still have normal functionality. That just means that there are certain parts of our body that are more resilient and there are certain parts of our body like the neurons or our cardiac myocytes, another example, that are more susceptible to the stress. Now, the causes of cellular injury really range and you should definitely know this, but we have discussed these in detail in previous lectures, so you should definitely check them out. These causes include hypoxia, inflammation, malnourishment, genetic mutations can also lead to cellular injury. And of course, the most common or the most, I guess, intuitive is trauma. Now, we have definitely created videos on these before, or if we haven't, we're going to be discussing some of them in our upcoming lectures, so make sure you watch them on our account. Now, when it comes to hypoxia, this is probably one of the most important uh, causes of cellular injury that you should know, because hypoxia is a common condition that occurs whether you're talking about a stroke, whether you're talking about a, car, uh, uh, a MI, a myocardial infarction, it's a very common pathophysiology that occurs in a lot of disease states. And you should know the basic concept behind hypoxia. Hypoxia is essentially a condition in which the body or region of our body is deprived of enough oxygen, especially at the tissue level. So essentially, you have low oxygen in hypoxia. Now, why is that the case? Why is low oxygen delivery to the tissues a problem? Well, mainly because our tissues are very dependent on oxygen. They need oxygen, right? O2 is important. No matter what someone says to you, it's a very important molecule. And why is that the case? You got to think back to biochemistry. And the reason why is that in the uh, electron transfer chain, oxygen is actually the final electron transport acceptor or the final electron acceptor. And you might be forgetting a lot of this, and that's okay because a lot of people don't remember biochemistry. But remember that when you don't have enough oxygen, you're not going to be able to have a, a normal oxidative phosphorylation occurring. And essentially, that's going to lead to low ATP or energy production. So to simplify this, in a hypoxic state, you have low O2 at the tissue level, right? But that, because it's at the tissue level, it's white spanning, that is going to mean you are going to have low ATP production. And that will eventually lead to damage and or death. Okay, 
So we've covered a lot of stuff in hypoxia. So now let's talk about the topic that we're discussing today, cellular damage. Cellular damage is essentially a type of stress, a type of extensive stress that's being put on the cell that our cell cannot handle and essentially it leads to a damaged state. Lack of ATP is the main culprit here, and it's going to lead to three main mechanisms of cellular damage that occur. All three of these are very high yield, okay? In fact, they are high yield AF, meaning you should remember this because either this is a very basic concept you need to know, or you'll get tested on it in your exams. So the first mechanism of cellular damage is blocking the sodium potassium pumps. All cells have sodium potassium pumps and essentially this is going to lead to our cells not being <clears throat> excuse me. This is going to lead to our cells not being able to remove sodium from inside of the cell. Normally this is your cell, you have sodium here, okay? And sodium is being pumped out with ATP, okay? Because of ATP and then you get sodium outside. Well, what happens if you have no ATP? You're not gonna have this pump functioning properly. You're not gonna have sodium out there. You're gonna have high, you're gonna have high sodium inside of the cell. And one thing, if you don't remember anything in terms of sodium, always remember that water follows sodium. So when water follows sodium and you have high sodium intracellularly, H2O will actually lead to the cell, go into the cell, and that will lead to the cell swelling and eventually bursting. That's what happens, okay? Because you have high sodium and you have high water content leading to cellular swelling and cellular damage, all right? That's the first mechanism you need to know. Very important, very high yield. The second mechanism is the blockade of our calcium pumps in our body. Similar to the sodium potassium pumps, our cells actually have a pump for calcium, okay? And this is the calcium pump. I'm going to color it red so, you know, it's different than the sodium pump. We have calcium 2 plus calcium in our body. It gets pumped extracellularly. So we have calcium outside. And this is all due to ATP as well. Well, if you lose ATP, if you don't have a, uh, enough supply of ATP, you're not going to be able to pump calcium outside. And that's going to lead to an increase in intracellular calcium levels, right, in the cytoplasm. And why is that a problem? Essentially, it is a problem because calcium can activate enzymes. Calcium is a activating substance, and it's often used for a lot of mechanisms, a lot of uh, a lot of processes intracellularly that need calcium, right? And calcium activates them. And one of those enzymes are lysozymes and uh, proteozymes. A lot of them need calcium. And when you have too much calcium intracellularly and those enzymes get activated, it's gonna lead to intracellular death because those enzymes are gonna cause damage inside and essentially it's going to cause the cell to wither away, okay? Because of positive enzyme activation, which should not be happening normally. Okay, this is a control mechanism that gets ruined. Now, finally, the last uh, mechanism of cellular damage because of the low ATP is activation of anaerobic glycolysis. This is going to lead to a buildup of lactic acid, and lactic acid is a acidic substance, right? And because it is acidic, you are going to have a decrease in the pH because you have an increase in the hydrogen concentration intracellularly and that also is going to cause a lot of damage it's going to halt a lot of the normal processes in the cell and when the normal processes don't work guys it's going to cause the cell to go into complete death mode so those are the three main mechanisms now when it comes to cellular damage you need to remember the essential pathway these cells go down the first pathway is going to be cellular swelling, okay? And this is how I remember. Remember, medicine is very intuitive. You need to just think about the progression of a disease. First of all, if you block all the sodium potassium pumps, right, our cells are going to swell because of the reasons I said you have high intracellular sodium concentration, right? And this is actually the initial phase of cellular damage. Do you, all of this is happening because of a lack of ATP. And when you lack that ATP, you're actually reducing or re essentially uh, blocking the function of the, the sodium potassium pumps that we discussed in the previous slide. And when you block the, the, the sodium potassium pumps, you have high intracellular sodium, okay? Intracellular, okay? And that's gonna lead to high water 
and that is going to lead to swelling. All right. Now, this, this actual pathway right here at this step, when the cell swells, it's actually a reversible uh, state because if you bring back the amount of uh, ATP needed to activate the, the sodium potassium pumps, you can actually reverse this whole, this whole substance, this whole pathway. But the key characteristics you need to remember when it comes to cellular swelling and uh, in terms of cellular damage is that you're going to have loss of the microvilli, which makes sense because you are growing the cell from a small state to a large state. You're going to have membrane blebbing. The rough endoplasmic reticular, reticulum will swell. You're going to have release of the ribosomes from the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And the way I remember it is if the RER is actually swelling, how are those ribosomes going to be able to attach them? They're just going to pop off. Kind of like when you have a large person and they put on a tight shirt and the buttons pop off. That's, just, that's really how I remember it. And you're going to have a decrease in protein, protein synthesis, which is probably one of the most important factors when it comes to cellular swelling. The cell function is starting to get damaged. The cell is not able to do what it needs to, and it's not able to produce the proteins needed to function properly. All right. So this is the first step. But what happens if you do not remove the stressor, if you do not have enough ATP continuously at this stage? Well, then the cell is going to go into the next stage where the, you actually have membrane damage occurring, the membrane, the cellular membrane damage. And this happens because of long standing cellular damage and long standing cellular swelling. Okay, the membrane damage is gonna occur to cellular, mitochondrial, and lysosomal membranes. So not just the cellular membrane, but the, the actual um, organelle membranes are also gonna have damage occurring. And this stage is very, very vital because once you damage these, these membranes, especially the mitochondrial membrane, and you release cytochrome C, the lysosomal membrane, where you release the actual context of the lysosome, you are not gonna be able to undo that damage. And that will eventually lead to the cell either deteriorating from this state and getting eaten up in, from its inside. This is an irreversible step. From here on, you are going to have cell death occurring, no matter what. No matter what. Okay, you cannot undo this stage. So what are the key characteristics of membrane damage? A lot of these are, are going to be seen in a lot of disease states. For example, you have intracellular enzymes occurring in the blood in larger quantities than you should. For example, troponin. Troponin usually comes from the heart. So when you measure troponins, you're going to be measuring the amount of troponins that are being released from the heart. How are they being released? The cardiac myocytes are being damaged and the membrane of those cardiac myocytes are releasing the troponin, which is usually intracellular. ALT, ASC, these are liver enzymes. Liver enzymes should not be in your blood otherwise, right? But because the liver cells are being damaged in, de in many states, whether you're talking about hepatitis, whether you're talking about he uh, hepatic carcinoma, et cetera, et cetera, you're going to have high ALT, AST levels in your blood, which just means you have damage occurring at the membrane level at that uh, organ, especially the liver, right? It's going to lead to an increase in the intracellular calcium, and that is going to activate enzymes. So we talked about that already enzymes okay cytochrome c is going to be released from damage to the mitochondria okay this is actually inside the mitochondria and when you damage the mitochondria and you release cytochrome c that's a signal to our cells to induce apoptosis because there is something not right in the cell and that cell is going to be damaged and then finally like i said earlier the lysosomal factors are also going to be released into the cytoplasm and that's just going to cause the cell to eat itself up from the inside out that's essentially what's going on when you have progressed to membrane damage at an irreversible stage in the cellular damage pathway. So with that being said, that encompasses pretty much everything you need to know about cellular damage, okay? These are the high yield facts, things you need to commit to your brain, commit to your memory, and things you can apply to your questions and your tests. So with that being said, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. If you found our content helpful, we're gonna be posting regularly so we can help you study and achieve your goal of becoming a physician. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you back here in the upcoming lecture.